This week on Hermitcraft. Season 6 has begun, the rules have been changed, and Iskel called a drowned a phantom as if hardcore hermits taught him nothing. I forget, there are weird guys. The phantoms, the place. And Green is also here. Welcome to the Hermitcraft Recap. Today, looking at all the episode 1s released during the first day of Season 6. My name is Pixel Riffs, our writer is XP, and we're pretty excited to tell you about all the things and the twists the Hermits have in store for us. The Season Start collab sees the group leaving Season 5 through the Rotten Portal at the centre of their community area, giving people an excuse to ooh and ah at Scar's build skills for one last time. Two surprises await them on the other side, a brand new world ready to be smashed in the face with builds, and Grian, who kind of has a similar fate. For oh, so Sparta! <laughs> Sorry, I just felt that when we ran to, you know? Lilac. Yeah, you can have my five levels. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> So yes, Grian is now a part of Hermitcraft, having admitted that he was invited some time ago, but just now felt confident enough to join. That now means that I am part of two SMPs, which is going to be very difficult on the workload side. These guys know Minecraft. You, your guy, you guys are going to be absolutely astounded by the level of incompetency that I have when it comes to this game. No other new members so far, but we see the return of some of the old ones, those who abandoned the series back in the middle of Season 5, such as iJevin, You know, it looks pretty good. Doc M. Hello, guys. Python. Don't I look amazing? And Biffa. Yay! Plus, XB Crafted has mentioned on Twitter that he might be returning, it'll just take him a while. But before we can go into the personal plans and Hermit-specific videos, we have an entire world to explain to you, and this time, there's a lot to explain about it. Aside from the usual lot of command block trickery, such as one player sleeping, no enderman griefing, fire tick being off, we now have custom heads and even items out of the wazoo. Armor stands, for example, can now be armed and posed using a special book and a lot of trial and error. The mob heads module from last season makes a comeback and are updated with new mobs too, so you can still embrace the fashion sense of the main character from Hotline Miami. Plus, hidden in the chests and treasures are secret gems that will become useful sometime later into the season. In his post on the Hermitcraft subreddit, Azuma says they will be used to buy custom textured heads from special villagers. For now, we've already seen Aquamarine found in a spider dungeon by both Zedaf and Biffa, Amethyst and Topaz found by Scar, and a sapphire or two found by Stress Monster. You, a sapphire gem? What the hell is that? On top of that, even some basic recipes such as stairs and wool dyeing have been modified to be more fair for the players. Finally, the Hermits have some sort of wrench module to allow them to rotate glazed terracotta while building with it. But even with all that, the game code remains unmodified, so it still counts as vanilla. Just a really weird vanilla. And if that wasn't reason enough for this season to be different than any other before, just wait till you see what they have planned for the map itself. By this point on Hermitcraft, the idea of having designated districts is no surprise. They had gaming districts since Season 3, shopping areas since Season 4, and a jungle to keep the troublemakers in since Season 5. But this time, an entire continent is separated into smaller parts, and for once, not by function, but by build style. Taking a page, or maybe the entire book, from Kingdom Craft, the Hermits are making each district have a distinct style and even a predetermined colour palette. Each Hermit can freely build in any of the districts as long as the build fits with the rest of it. Azuma, being the helpful fella he is, has posted a map overview with all the districts marked on it. Sadly, said map is pretty much made for ants. I mean, seriously, this is a postage stamp, guys. Thankfully, both Zedaf and Grian provide their own breakdown of the concept, one fancier than the other. We've got industrial, medieval, modern, shopping. That is the fantasy realm. Pirate land. There's Aqua Town, where you probably build underwater. And to think about it, we really should have just shown their entire clips instead of explaining it in our own words. And with all that out of the way, let's take a look at all the events and mishaps that occurred on the first day of Hermitcraft Season 6. Starting with Mumbo Jumbo, who's perhaps gotten too used to the luxury of all his Season 5 auto farms and exploding cobblestone, so starting again feels a little intimidating. But about five minutes in, he's already found some redstone, so that's it folks, Season 6 is a go. Oh, now there it is. 
That's the good stuff. He naturally gravitates to the industrial area, but that's actually not where he plans to set up this season. Instead, he's got his sights set on a series of islands off the coast of the Futuristic District, and he's planning to decorate them in the same style. Check out these guys! I actually haven't really seen these. <laughs> so there we go. This is, this is island number one. Is that a shipwreck? And we've got a shipwreck, ladies and gentlemen. After a two hour branch mining session in which he gets about a full chest of redstone and a pocket full of diamonds, the first thing he builds is a tree house, which isn't necessarily all that futuristic unless the tree is a Wi-Fi hotspot or something, but I guess the future has to start somewhere, so that may as well be now. And I wonder how the end product is actually going to look. Ruined it? Okay, from that side, that's quite cool. That looks pretty good. Across the ocean on the mainland, Biffa has also staked a claim to the futuristic district. But first, he has to get there, which he does with a little help from a friendly turtle. You're looking fancy in your suit, by the way. Oh, thanks. You, you're looking weird in your face. What's going on with your... You look a bit green I'm around the gills. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can't quite see. I'm, I'm turtle man today. <laughs> his plan is to set up in a cove with Azuma and Grian as his neighbours, once they move in anyway, because right now his only neighbours are these green guys who like to explode things. Yabada! Ah, oh, what? Sadly, during his first proper caving session, he accidentally recorded his camera account, so we don't get to see him finding his first diamonds, but we do get to hear some faint, excited yelling. Once he's back on the surface, though, he meets up with Grian to figure out exactly where to divide up their territory, and they have some near-death fun experimenting with bubble column mechanics. Bob up and down for a minute. I'll yeah. The Whoa. Stuff. Oh, no! Oh, there he is! <laughs> I'm going down with the boat! <laughs> <laughs> Azuma, in the meantime, has a death death fun trying to make his way back to the surface, and we're only mentioning it here because him drowning marks the official first death of the season. You'd expect someone with a turtle head to be more durable underwater, but look, no fins, four legs, he's not a turtle, he's a tortoise, and they can't swim. But then I remembered that all of my items are going to go to the top of the water. <laughs> that is a stroke of luck right there, I tell you. This could have been brutal. We could have lost our heart of the sea, our diamond pick. His revenge on the ocean comes in the form of fence gate powered scuba gear. Basically the good old air bubble exploits, but now with extreme open and close action. Soon enough, his underwater exploration leads him to discovering a curiously mossy ruin sticking out of the ocean floor. A ruin that turns out to be a stronghold, the ones with the end portals in them. And man, you thought the beginning of season five had mad pace. And I am actually going to plug that up because the silverfish are going to come after me and be a pain in the butt. But that is a really cool thing to find on the first episode. Totally wasn't expecting that. It is fortunate that he did that because in his own video, Tango Tech drops this bombshell on us. Uh, I want to get an Elytra very soon. Like, very soon. Possibly next episode. We'll see. This might mean one of two things. Either by episode 2, Tango will go and single-handedly slay the dragon, not saying he can't, but just kind of expected it to be a community event, or Tango is planning on somehow bridging across thousands of blocks to the nearest end city without even killing the space lizard, then stealing the elytra, throwing it into an ender chest, and hurling himself into the void, then supposedly joining a pack of wild phantoms and becoming their leader. But before he becomes the terror that flaps in the night, he shares his plans for the base build. It seems, drained by his own ambition on the last base, he chose to tone it down a notch this time and settle underground in the fantasy area, basically limiting himself to how big he can go by having to first dig that big out. Uh, I want to make it the way to get into my base at the top of this. So you'll swoop in, fly down the tower, and then fly down through the center of the mountain to get to my... Uh, lair down below. I think that's the plan. Cubfan, another member known for his large-scale builds, is also getting restrained, but this time by the game itself, since it decided to spawn him headfirst into a tree. <laughs> As if we didn't have enough trouble with leafy people last season. The area Cub is most interested in is actually not charted on the maps of Zedaf and Grian, a southeastern island known as Moonbase Alpha. The plan for it is to terraform its surface into a grey alien environment, as if part of the moon has crashed into the planet. Basically, an excuse to do space stuff without having to fight off Enderman. Uh, personally, I have no plan. <laughs> uh, I've been sort of thinking we could do something similar here uh, in the ocean, like make an ocean base or something, perhaps. But the thing is, like, underwater is not good for 
you too. What's curious is that Scar mentions the moon base will somehow tie into another area, the Pirate Island of all things, so we're either getting space pirates or whalers on the moon. We will have a rocket ship towering into the air, the ground will be completely transformed into a white, grayish, dusty terrain, and to top it off, we will tie this all in to Pirate Island. And yes, the Pirate Island is already being built on by Good Times with Scar, or should I say, Good Times with Scar? For now, Scar is stuck trying to decide whether to go for the good old sailboats and pillaging, or for a more classy steampunk pirates with their airships and zeppelins. One doesn't necessarily exclude the other, just make sure to pillage and get a parrot or something. His first build on the server ends up being a literal hole in the ground, but pirate coves are a thing so it fits thematically anyway. Plus, in Scar's usual fashion, it looks gorgeous. Welcome back and look at this place. It is looking pretty nice. I, I'm actually quite pleased with the way this has all slowly come together. The first alliance of the server is forged when they exchange gifts with zombie Cleo, Scar dropping off some carrots for her and Cleo providing Scar with his very own bed. Have a nice bed. I'll be a generous gift from the zombie pirate herself. Not willing to wait for Scar to make up his mind, in her first episode Cleo has gathered an ungodly amount of wood, or at least an ungodly amount of planks, to assemble it into her personal vessel. And while the sails are not yet up and the cannons have not yet arrived, the message is crystal clear. This is what I call a starter house. Be very afraid. Yarr me hearties! No 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 no! No! Oh. Okay, that didn't go too well. At least it was fun. But in a server with a big old ocean, in an update that caters to big old oceans, it's no surprise that a few other people are also planning to play as pirates. That means Iskal can live out his childhood dream of becoming a pirate rock star. And if you think we're joking here, he's gone on record saying this multiple times now. Both he and Stress Monster have chosen to set up in a frozen ocean, a field of icebergs off the southern coast of the modern district. It's an interesting challenge, since icebergs don't have many natural resources other than, you know, ice and snow, so Stress Monster heads out in search of some basic resources and tries to make sense of all this new stuff that's trying to kill her. Ah! Are these zombies? No! By a drowned? No! <laughs> Why did that do me? Once she's got a starter kit together, the icebergs beckon. Despite being a frozen ocean and the only mobs around being polar bears, there are still trenches of magma blocks threatening to drag her down boat and all. So she does the sensible thing and hollows out a section of a nearby iceberg just so she can have somewhere to sit and chill. Iskal also takes his time getting there, as the man who had a full beacon in week one of Hermitcraft Season 5 reminds us that Minecraft isn't a race. Instead, he's happy to explore and get excited about the shopping district coming back. I guess even Viking Ice Pirates need some retail therapy now and again. Once he reaches the ice fields, he stumbles upon a shipwreck overturned in the freezing water and decides to dry out the inside and set up a bedroom in the cabin. Which is a good thing, because he needed a crash course in how water physics work now. Oh dudes, look at that, look at all that iron! <laughs> my treasure, my gorgeous treasure. And I need air. Woo! He's not the only one. Doc M, the only person with a centered hashtag NHO in his video description, has been keeping up with the 1.13 snapshots, but even he is a little baffled at how quickly you can drown, how easily blocks become waterlogged, and how hard it is to dig up some buried treasure. Rather than try and keep pace with all the other technical players on the server, Doc's plan this season is to take it easy, explore the world, maybe settle down somewhere with a nice coral reef, and do a kind of water-based equivalent of Skyblock, building an artificial island from scratch. First though, he takes to the ocean and actually encounters Iskal's snowbound shipwreck. So next time Iskal logs in, he might have one more roommate than he expected. ...factor in the game now. Bed, we found a home. You think this is somebody's place? I'm pretty sure it is. But well, we're pirates, we could occupy this. Impulse SV has also decided to pace himself and go with the flow this season. Setting up in a secluded bay on the southwest side of the main island, surrounded by the industrial district, Impulse digs into the rock and starts his own take on the Ethos Lab man cave. Like many of his server mates though, one of the first things he finds when he digs down is an abandoned mineshaft, which means cave spiders 
and poison. So deciding the best antidote is a healthy supply of food, he retreats to the nearby hills and brings back a few cows to dump into an entity cramming nano farm. Between that and the indoor wheat field, he's well fed enough to head back down and fight those spiders. But maybe that's best left for episode two. All right, there we go, got them all pushed in. And this is definitely like the simplest cow farm possible. You can see we can get it done in day one. And I actually do have a tutorial I did on this way back when. Tinfoil Chef is also planning to get reacquainted with the great indoors, mostly because it gives him a safe place to sleep and avoid attack from phantoms. Seriously, the first thing the man does is to gather materials for a bed, making him about 200% more prepared than some of the other hermits. I was in a hurry when I... Oh, no, no, no. Oh, you son of a... Oh. Well, at least he didn't blow up the bed. But he's also preparing for a different kind of disaster, as he announces his base is going to be based around the Voltec vaults from the Fallout series. Insert jokes about tunnel snakes here. Speaking of snakes, Python GB is the first to set up in the modern district, right next door to a village which has provided some nice easy food. After felling a bunch of spruce trees and outlining the boundary between the modern area and the shopping district, he puts together a contemporary style starter house with a potato garden out the back. Several people stop by to admire his handiwork, including a strange turtle man who drops off a shiny blue rock. Oh my god! <laughs> There's a Zuma for just dropping off a casual diamond to me. Did he get the diamonds to you achievement? And once the shopping district is open, Python might want to open a pet shop if he has the same sort of success he had taming that wolf. At least he's taken a more animal-friendly approach than Joe Hills, who laments the lack of spears to fish with and promptly axe murders the first salmon he sees. Like many of his fellow hermits, he's planning to get out and see the world this season, and he's going to start with this shallow cave because he needs somewhere to sleep away the night. Although he does put up a bulletin board, presumably so that when he wanders off for too long, people can put up notes which say, has anyone seen Joe Hills? One of the things I was planning on doing this season is to move from build to build without actually establishing a base for myself, just kind of seeing where the sea takes me, seeing where my wanderings take me. Wales Knight, on the contrary, is fully on Team Day 1 Starter House, which doesn't really make much sense when he announces that his plan for the season is basically the same as Joe's, be less of a homebody and more of a nomad, explore the world, and more importantly, what the hermit kind will do to said world. Hey Wells, nice house. The plan somewhat comes together if you consider his nomading not as a lack of having a base, but as having a lot of small bases scattered across the map. Maybe he's planning an Airbnb network or something. So yeah, there we go. There's the starter house. Hermitcraft is going to be daily, uh, at least for a little while. Probably for, I'd say probably for at least like the first week, quite possibly for the first couple of months of season six. Uh, we're going to have daily Hermitcraft episodes, so no big deal. Uh, we'll get all sorts of stuff done. ZF wants a similar traveling hobo experience out of his season six. And having a house to call home in every district seems like a grand plan for the series all about different styles and collabs. But one wonders, where are they expecting to find materials to make said houses out of? ZF has a pretty unique solution. Um, and I'm basically gonna beg, borrow, and steal my way <laughs> through this season. That being said, he did already find a spawner, some diamonds, and a shipwreck. So maybe the materials won't be as much of an issue, just gotta get used to carrying them all on his back. Ijevin, on the other hand, has his mind set on some mysterious superbase he'll start later into the season. Not much is known about it yet, except that it will be pretty awesome. One set is a long-term build that's going to be a mega build. And the other is to be involved in Hermitcraft as much as possible. We'll have to wait and see, both for the main base and for the collabs, but judging by the starter house he's built, Jevin is back on his A-game. Other people, like Rendog, have more solid goals. By the end of episode 1, Ren pledges to have reached the destination for his base and acquired enough diamonds for a diamond pickaxe, both of which are successful. He sets up in the Fantasy District and digs into the side of a hill, a temporary base which he questionably names the Ren Hole, before embarking upon a caving expedition and dying a couple of times, but emerging with a diamond pick. This is all leading up to an expedition to the Nether for Quartz, which he needs for a comparator, which he needs for a shop. And it's gonna be a shop that I think is gonna be very lucrative for us here. What exactly that shop is, we don't know yet, but we do know Ren is feeling pretty generous, as he leaves a chest full of flowers and baked potatoes for his neighbour, who this season is false symmetry. 
This is noteworthy because False has received another present that day from Python GB. Mistakes have been made. He's trying to give me a poison. You know what? I will save that poisonous potato python and I will. I don't know, gift it back to you at some point, okay? Yeah. Revenge will be had. And finally, there's Grian. While it's widely accepted that his building skills are amazing, they might be outweighed by the fact that his knowledge of current versions of Minecraft is. limited. This means two things, that gathering materials and protecting himself from enemies will be more of a challenge than you might expect, and that we, the viewers, will probably find it adorable. It's all so hilariously cute. To go, but then I just found this, and it's, I, don't, I don't know why it's made me so happy. It's so funny! To kind of give you an idea of just how far removed I am from being up to date on Minecraft, let alone Hermitcraft, just Minecraft, this is the first time I'm using dual wielding. Despite all that, he actually pulls quite a trick making a small dome-shaped house on top of an upside down shipwreck, quickly learning that while houses are more important than armor, they don't necessarily work unless you're hiding in one. Ah! No! No, don't you dare! Don't you dare! Oh, he's there! Oh no 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 no! Oh, you monster! But as much as we're making fun of him here, by the end of his first episode, Grian managed to build an underwater glass dome and drain half of the shipwreck, claiming the treasures inside, build a bubble column boat elevator and lure Biff into one that nearly drowned him, find diamonds, make a pickaxe and go to the nether, and even help gather up the remains of Good Times with Scar, just for giggles and brownie points. Look at that. Good guy Grian. Just put his stuff in a chest for him. So don't worry, he'll be fine as long as he makes realistic goals for himself. Now the main thing that I need to find actually is a bunch of turtles because if I can make a turtle helmet that's going to give me the extra 10 seconds I need underwater because it gives you water breathing. And there it goes. But that's about it for the day one episodes of Hermitcraft Season 6. Our writer is XP. And my name is Pixel Riffs. Is there something we've missed? Is there something you're looking forward to this season? Make sure you let us know in the comments. While you're there, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe so you won't miss future recaps. And if you're up for even more Minecraft 1.13, I've just started a brand new single player series on my channel, and that's linked in the end cards. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next week.